Canada's Golden Triangle in British Columbia is known for its rich mineral resources and for hosting very high-grade deposits and some of Canada's largest and more productive mines. Prospect Ridge is exploring just outside the traditional boundaries of the Golden Triangle on ground that hosted a historical high-grade mine with geology that is consistent with Golden Triangle structures and mineralization. The company has an exploration program this summer to further validate its potential with many possible catalysts. This property combined with a very experienced and successful management team and board of directors has a very exciting opportunity with a potential for large discoveries. We've got CEO Mike Iverson and President Yan Ducharme here to tell us about the company and the opportunity. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. It's Wednesday, July the 10th. Please remember this is neither recommendation or investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Michael, Yan, thanks a lot for joining us how are things going things are great and i'd like to thank everybody for joining us today to take a look at our our project here up in terrace and uh, thanks for coming so disclaimer here um and here who we are so everybody is online you may have heard of simon ridgeway simon ridgeway and i have been together this is our board of directors he's the chairman of our board He's been, uh, him and I have worked together now for over 28 years in, uh, in Fortuna Silver Mines. We started Fortuna Silver Mines together. He was a chairman at Nalgo Mining Corp uh, with uh, Jan and myself. And uh, so he's, he's a very, very strong member of our team, both on the business side and on the technical side. Uh, myself, I've really been uh, with only two or three companies, one being Fortuna and the other one being Nalgo. Fortuna. Ended up being the 10th largest silver company in the world and now a gold company with the last three mines that are gold. I was there for 24 years. I was there from the beginning and then in 2016, I retired. I was also CEO of Nalgo Mining Corp. And uh, with Ian, we had built a resource of 2.1 million ounces and we sold that to a Cisco same same year, 2016. Ian, I'm gonna, I want you to say a little bit about yourself and then I'll take back, back Michael. Okay, well... Uh... I've been a geologist for a bit more than 25 years, so I'm also the president and senior geologist of the company. Um, I've been, uh, I was with Mike uh, when we were uh, bought by Osisco uh, at Nile for Nile when Nile Gold was uh, bought by Osisco, and uh, since then I've been exploration manager for a few companies like. Uh, um, Agnico Eagle, Yamana, and uh, Soquam, and uh, West Dome Gold Mine just previously uh, to join uh, Prospect Ridge here. Okay, then we have Michael Michel. He is a, he was the VP of Exploration for West Dome and has just taken on the new job of being the CEO President of Red Pine Exploration. Again, he brings, he's a senior geologist, so he brings in uh, strong technical, uh, technical, um, Technical and business side business to the to the company. The balance Ma of the director, the balance of the directors are um, uh, lawyers or junior directors, and as we grow, we will replace them as needed. So share structure 70, 72 million shares. Um, half of that, half of those shares are are owned by an inside. Well, I shouldn't say an inside group. A group that's been with me for twenty four years. They've been with me through all the companies. Uh, we hold most of those shares in one brokerage house uh, with one broker so that we keep everybody honest. Um, so it's it, it very, very strong, very strong group. And it's very and it's very difficult for we knew we found in Nalgo that they uh, a couple of companies wanted to go hostile on us. And we had so many shares that they just didn't have that opportunity. Well, the same guys are with me in this one. I, again, we own like half these shares. So it's pretty going to be pretty hard for anybody to steal this from us. Which we know this is some. We will have a lot of attention from this property after this drilling season. Options, uh, the company options, warrants. These are all brand new warrants. Uh, all else coming out through this financing that we're doing right now, um, and we have not quite finished. Uh, we are we've got a, and we're raising four point five million. We're at four point one million right now, so we got about four hundred thousand to go. Um, debt zero, so fully diluted would be eighty eighty seven million. So the properties are um, located uh, uh, outside the Golden Triangle. Actually, the Golden Triangle is just pointing at us, uh, saying that the next big discovery is there. So we're based uh, near Terrace. And the advantage of being there is that, uh, well, there's lots of infrastructure. 
you can see that the properties uh, are bordered by highways, Trans-Canadian Highway there, and then Nishga Highway there. Uh, terrace is about 10 kilometers just south of the beginning of our property there. Uh, and there's a, a, a airport there in Terrace. Uh, the railway is just also uh, bordering the, the side of the property with a, with a stop there and a power grid there too. So the property is 730 square kilometers and um, we having uh, it's fully owned by us. And there's a 3% NSR with a buyback of 2% for 2 million. And those NSR belongs to the prospector from which we acquired the properties. Uh, we also have uh, our land package is also uh, uh, overlapping uh, some traditional uh, territory of uh, four first uh, Gitson House and also two other First Nation. And so far, we have a good relationship with them. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have a consultant that works with us to introduce us and to maintain a very good uh, contact with them. I'm curious, Jan, on the property map there, you've got those little lines connecting the the outer regions and, and that. Like, is the rest of the, uh, is there a reason for those um, this smaller is... areas or is the other, uh, have they been uh, prospected and claimed by other groups? Uh, you mean these places? Yeah. This area? Yeah, this is because we need to join if the the, the, the claims are contiguous, you can spread the, the credits all over. Ah. So, so that's why. But it, eventually it will change because we we need to prospect these. So we'll we'll see uh, how, uh, how everything evolves. But yeah, they, these were kind of gloves that were created by... Uh, there was uh, sh historical showings there, but yeah, we need to do further investigation. It's a huge land package and we... We're just, yeah, we're progressing well, but as you will see, but yeah, that's still lots of work to do. So just a quick look at the geology. Uh, in green here, you have the Hazelton group, and in beige, you have the uh, Bowser Lake group. So, and uh, the intrusive rocks that are um, cutting those rocks are the same age as uh, uh, everything you have in the Golden Triangle. So basically, uh, the rock package that we have here is just the geological continuity of the rocks that are hosting those uh, big deposits uh, in the Golden Triangle. It's the same same age and same rock groups. So if we look at the, our Nas Creek property, uh, Nas Creek property, there's uh, six main showings there. And the main one is certainly Copper Ridge for us. Uh, and we also have new discoveries that we made last year uh, just on our adjacent um, Holy Grail property. So if we look a little bit at Copper Ridge, on Copper Ridge, well, we, this is uh, really um, a copper, gold, silver um, uh, zones that we found. So right now, what we're having is just surface sample. This is where we, because we, that we took by, by prospecting. So with the very high grade stuff uh, and uh, in gold, uh, silver and copper. Just here, just a picture to illustrate a little bit of what it looks like when we're landing there. We, it's uh, on the top of a mountain, uh, of Mount Nas, and you can see down the cliff, you can see the, about 30 or 40 meters of uh, malachite staining there. So when we're landing there, we already know that something's, uh, something uh, is happening in this area. Um, yeah, and on the left, those are people, I believe. Are there a couple people in the picture to give some sense of scale? Am I right that? With that? Yeah, these are prospecting and our prospectors that are ready for uh, for the day. All right. And what altitude is the, uh, the this ridge at? Just to have some scale of, of uh, how high up you are. It's it's about a eighteen hundred meters. Okay. In elevation there. So right now, snow is almost gone at this moment so getting ready to drill uh, build pads uh, next week so uh, the prospecting we did on copper ridge uh, well the, the the malachite staining that we see on the cliff was the starting point of it and then uh, last summer we decided to ex uh, go there and what we managed to do is to reach a uh, 1.5 uh, kilometer by 850 meters 
uh, area and over a vertical difference of 500 meters. So we uh, prospected about 17 days there and we sampled a lot of veins. So all the dots that uh, you're seeing there are um, veins that have been sampled, surface sample that are taken on an outcrop. They are not floating. Uh, it's not the float that the uh, erratic block that was sampled. It's really the vein, in situ veins that we're sampling. And uh, what you see there is our gold equivalent. So what I do is I I, I had the, the gold, the silver, copper, and also lead and zinc, because on the property, we have other veins that uh, contain all those five metals together. So to keep it uh, homogeneous, uh, I calculate the, the gold equivalent with this. And what you have in pink is the high values at above 10 grams per ton of uh, gold equivalent. And so last, last summer, we took 241 samples. 80% of them came back mineralized and 17% are just above 10 grams per ton of gold equivalent. And here those lines are showing the orientation of the veins. So those veins are north, south, and they're dipping toward the east. So what you're seeing there are it, all those dots are mostly one sample taking on one vein. Because of the steepness of the ground, sometimes we just grab a sample where we can on the vein. Uh, but we see that we often see that the vein continue up uphill and downhill. So what you so what we're looking at is a nice is a cluster of parallel veins that are oriented north-south there. If we look at a 3D uh, vision of it, so we're looking toward the east. Uh, just in the background, you can see the Trans-Canadian Highway there. It's about seven kilometers away. Uh, and there's uh, logging roads there. And the nearest one brings us to three kilometers from the, from this uh, this zone. So. You can see that we sam we have sampled the, the ridges of the uh, of the mountain there that were accessible, but we still have still have some ground, lots of ground to cover. Like I mentioned, I said uh, uh, mentioned that we spent seventeen days uh, last uh, last summer there. We were just chased by the bad weather, so we were uh, always yeah, it was always foggy, and so we couldn't go there anymore. But we still have a lot of work to be the uh, to do there. And the you can see that the veins were I just made here that the, to establish that we, we can see the veins on both both sides of that ridge. So we, we can see the continuity of it. And if we look at this area in more detail here, what you have here is a LIDAR imagery that we have. And what I did is I highlighted the veins uh, that the, the most uh, uh, the most visible veins that uh, were on the imagery, you can still see that I didn't do all of them. You can still see lineaments there, which are the veins. So what this tells us is that, well, we have physical continuity on the vein there, but also in grades because we managed to do some sampling on those ridge. And we can see that, well, there's, uh, there's lots of uh, gold equivalent, uh, high grade stuff there, high grade stuff there. So we have, uh, physical continuity, but also uh, great continuity on, on those veins. Uh, and with the amount of samples you're seeing there, well, and, and all, all those elements, you can see that there's a lot of other veins between the, the one that I highlighted. So our goal for this summer is to um, drill uh, this big stacking of veins. So we're going to put the drill on top of the mountain and just go down and plug two holes there or two or three holes, depending what we're finding, and to go across this stacking of vein. Looking at your scale there, it says 25 meters for that little block. That That's what, 300-ish meters you'd be going down, ballparking it, or? Yeah, well, uh, our plan is to put uh, the drill there, and we will uh, drill a uh, plan a hole of 350 meters to go down there. So we will uh, investigate uh, the, uh, this whole stacking of, uh, of vein. And we also know that there are uh, veins uh, below because we shot some, uh, shot some footage there while moving around with the helicopter and we saw some malachite staining and other veins there. So, But for the first pass, I will, uh, I will, we will 
investigate what we know where, where we have samples so that that will be a very good start for us sure i I, I want to digress a little bit. You keep referring to malachite staining. For those who aren't that geological exploration aware, can you just explain the significance of that? Yeah, the the, the malachite staining is a uh, well. When you look at the rooftop on uh, some buildings, you can see that they are they are turning uh, uh, greenish. So this is uh, because they're made of copper. So malachite staining is the uh, it is the uh, copper uh, oxidation of uh, the calcopyrite or copper minerals. Gotcha. So it All creates right. a lot of painting. As you can see in the in the picture here, you can see the greenish stuff, but you also uh, maybe not that uh, visible there, but you also have the calcopyrite there. So the malachite staining is, yeah, it's when we look at the vein, it's, oh, there's, it's that the, the, we recognize the green there. And yeah, that's a, uh, Aiming us toward the, uh, we know that there's copper in there. So, at the end of mine, if I say, it's just, I'm just going to jump in here for a second. So, yep. yeah. So we know that. I mean, they, these veins are visible. I, I know that it's a lot to a lot to take in, but like on Copper Ridge here, uh, you know, you notice there's there's 200 veins that we have identified, um, identified on surface. You know, we can see these or identified them. We have, and, and like Ann said, we have a we have we have sampled. Each and every one of them, and Jan's, you know, like when when you look at the the uh, purple purple dots, and he says it's over, you know, you know that means it's over ten grams. That means we've had it up to one hundred and one grams. I mean, that being the max. I mean, uh, silver being like four and a half kilos, four kilos, four point eight kilos. So I mean, when we're talking over ten grams, some of this stuff is ten times that, eight times that, five times that. Another thing that we have noticed noticed um, noticed with the with the malachite. Uh, when we do find it, it did it, it does host it, it seems the three of them are together or the five of them are together being the silver gold silver gold copper uh zinc and lead and so in, in this area that you see this picture that you're seeing right now uh again said that it took it, they worked there for 18 days so this came in the last 18 days of the season and the snow the snow drove them off the mountain so this thing is is open what you mentioned is this is this this spot is still open so we're really anxious to get the crews back up in here. And we have the same crews that we had last year. So they know exactly where to start and exactly where to go. And 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 we had stepped out from here um one kilometer. And maybe I'm maybe I'm ahead of ahead of that slide, but we've already stepped up from, from Copper Ridge here one kilometer to the west and, and got some very nice yeah, results. We'll have the image later. Yeah. And okay, sorry, I'll let will leave it leave it until we catch up to it. Yeah. Okay. But what I want to say, this thing is a huge footprint on surface, huge, with huge results. We go underground here, we go underground drilling, and we get half of that or, or half that footprint. We don't know what we're going to get, but we're going to get something, and that's for sure. And this thing is this thing is very powerful on surface, very powerful on surface, and we know it comes from down below. So we know we know we're going to hit. And just to clarify, you, you, you've talked about you were pushed off the mountain last year, end of the season, bad weather and so forth. So you got enough data from last season to know where you want to drill now, but you're going to be doing additional surface sampling to uh, fill out the picture and then maybe help uh, orient and direct uh, future drilling. Is that right? Yeah, when we're uh, when we're prospecting, we're also doing some geological mapping at the same time. So and like I mentioned, we're sampling our veins on outcrop so we have an understanding of how the vein are uh, in the in uh, three dimensions so we are ready to drill this but we're having a lot of success so far just with prospecting and because all this has been found with by prospecting and the rest that i will show also so this the, the, for us with all the exposure that we have well it's the best tool right now and it's one of the cheapest one too so we just walk and we we hit the ground and if we if so, it's something very interesting that uh, that is carry give us good result what well, it can be turned into a drill target very fast it's not like uh, when we're doing some soil geochemistry or some geophysics that gives us anomalies that we need to check so we're already checking them. So when we're just extending those, those uh, well, when you have that kind of footprint, well, the best thing to look for, uh, the, the, the best place to look for to find the next thing is, well, you just go around it. Like, it's like uh, when you have a mine, well, what they do, huh? they just go around them. 
to find the next one, well, we're just going to pursue extending that one. So if we look at another uh, showing that we have on that property, is called Doreen Mine. The Doreen Mine was a very small operation that was, uh, that was uh, mined in, uh, uh, in the 19 and uh, the 1920s and uh, 50s, uh, but they just processed 700 tons from there. So it was really just tiny undergrounds working. They were just basically following uh, a vein. So the uh, as you can see there, but we managed to and they, but they they had a very good grade. So the uh, the mine uh, it's almost 17 grams per ton of gold, uh, 58 uh, grams uh, per ton of silver, some copper, lead, and zinc. So that's why. Uh, I mean, I'm calculating my gold equivalent with those five metals because we have them in the property. Uh, so so uh, and we managed to get back in uh, the, those openings and uh, we took some samples and uh, we got some similar results here. 23 grams gold equivalent, 24, 16, 13. But also we found some other veins in the, um, uh, in the area. So uh, one here gave us... Uh, uh, almost uh, 12 grams gold equivalent here, 24 here, 39 there. So that's it, that for us, it's indicating that we may be looking at another uh, stacking of veins like we just saw on Copper Ridge. So that's that that the Doreen vein, the Doreen mine vein is not the only one in this area. How far away is Doreen mine from Copper Ridge? That's about, uh, I would say, about the three, uh, three, three, four kilometers. But you have a lots of uh, up and down yeah. <laughs> between the two. As the yeah. bird flies. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry, if we look at Leon's legacy, that is not very far from the ring. Uh, whoops. So what you see there is uh, what happened there is that uh, we were flying over the mountain there and go to go to the Doreen, and we were seeing some quartz veins on the surface. So. Uh, we decided to stop uh, one day and we found what we call now Leon's Legacy. So Leon's Legacy, we, it's uh, also uh, a little bit similar to uh, Copper Ridge with uh, with um, lots of copper sometimes, 8% here, uh, but also some gold there, uh, 20 grams here, 20, 14, 8.2% uh, copper, 4.3, and along with the silver values. So. What we're looking at is another stacking of vein there. You can see also an example of samples there. So what did what it signifies for us is that well, just by and to answer another, uh, again your question, Martin, this is uh, we did pro we just prospected there and this is that's how we found it just by stopping there and sampling the vein uh, that we're seeing on the outcrop. But it also opens up a lot of ground for us because we have a stacking of vein right there. We have another one there. So we need to figure out what's going on in this area. So it opens up a lot of ground, that very interesting ground uh, to prospect for us. Have you done any other sort of airborne surveys, magnetic or, or gravity or anything like that? Would that add value to your, your picture of the uh, area? Not yet. Uh, we so far, uh, when I arrived there in 2022, it was mainly uh, what we were doing. We were doing some uh, uh, surface sam well, sampling like this, prospecting. Also, there we have a few grids of uh, um, soil sampling and uh, some uh, stream sediments, but nothing really came out of it. So, but the prospecting always gave us very good results. So that's we just kept at it, and well, so far. You can see the results. Uh, it's uh, it's paying off. Yeah, just just adding a little piece to that. So probably five years ago, like on Copper Ridge, it probably was under snow, uh, probably tw twelve months of the year. So it, it and just just us going up there over the last you know since twenty twenty one, we have noticed how fast the snow is disappearing from the top. So I mean, some of these areas that were like like Copper Ridge, probably no one else has seen this, but uh, we're probably the first ones to see this. So, and we know that there's a lot of areas in the Alpine that we haven't been to uh, that we know that we need to investigate still. So, okay, the snow, the 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 the, the snowpack and the glaciers receding very quickly now. They are down to a point now that there's a, a sliver of what they used to be. So they are going much faster than they used to. I mean, another four or five years, 
probably won't be any any glaciers up there or snow 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 facts anymore, which makes it a brand new area for exploration. Never been touched. Yep. Nos, just just to give everybody, and I know I'm jumping in here, but the Nos property has never had a junior company on it. At the last thirty years, if I had been an old prospector that was a Buddhist that wanted to put a Buddhist temple on the top, he did <laughs> not want it. He did not want it to go into a public company. He chased them all the way as they came. So this is the first time a public company's had this opportunity. And we've also had the opportunity of 30 years of them working there to be able to go into these areas and, and start to be able to work on something that's been worked on for some time. So it did make our life a little bit easier. Yeah, it's, a, it's full of opportunity. And that prospector, yeah, he works a lot on, uh, he did some work on Hagen here, uh, which have, uh, has uh, very good uh, results too in gold, silver, lead and zinc. The J veins, the J veins, we got the uh, highest silver uh, results here with 4.7 kilos per ton in uh, one sample there. Amazing. And uh, 59 grams per ton of gold in one. And also copper, lead, and zinc. So, and, and candy showing just down copper ridge there. So, lots of, uh, lots of uh, showings that we still need to do some further work on, but are already very interesting. Uh, just to Illustrate again the, our prospecting success that we have. So we decided to uh, to step up a little bit from Copper Ridge uh, in the last few days, uh, and uh, we we went for about the kilometers away from Copper Ridge. Well, we found Golden Bowl there, Golden Bowl with the gold, uh, silver, copper, lead, and zinc there in veins uh, again, and a temple there that. Uh, the we found some uh, mainly uh, well you uh, you can have some high grade gold there with 8.1 uh, uh, grams per ton of gold but also some silver and some copper like almost 15 percent copper there so very interesting uh, area that we need uh, further work there because we just spent i think this one temple two days and a uh, golden bowl uh, one day so this is there's just by prospecting, we found a lot of things uh, in these veins. We, it's not again, it's not floats. It's rocks that uh, we from outcrop. So, prospecting is really a huge thing for us and giving us some very good results there. So we prefer to put the money on the uh, on the boots on the ground and sampling rocks. And also on the Holy Grail side, we also uh, news uh, our new discovery. Well, a garland here with the uh, gold, uh, silver, and copper there too. And sometimes with zinc also, with hatch, gold, silver, lead, and zinc too. So more uh, areas that prospect. And the rock behind me is actually coming from garland from this year. So we're still finding uh, interesting stuff. We're So more results to come. So, and if we just look a little bit at an overview of, uh, of Holy Grail, well, what you're seeing there, well, would, there's th this is about a stretch of uh, 60, 60 kilometers. And all this has been explored by uh, logging roads and the highway that is just beside it. So it gives us really access, and which is make it very cheap logistics to, to do. And it's really not that expensive for us because we're just based there. So we just can go explore this. And uh, so we got very uh, a lot of... Uh, huge amount of uh, showings to work further work to do further work on them and all this found by prospecting so again uh, so again uh, showings with the uh, gold silver copper lead and zinc all over the place so uh, almost every mountain where we went uh, we found something that is worth uh, follow up uh, and further work and just a quick uh, quick overview of uh, for this year so what you see in green here are the uh, surface uh, covered by our drilling permits um, that we, we have. They are in place. Uh, our headquarters are there, PR headquarters. So we we're based, we're, we're seeing the, we're seeing the mountains of the property from the, from the windows of the house we're renting there and everything is occurring there. So we can land helicopter there. We're processing the uh, core, core there. Uh, all the teams are based there. So, uh, when they're not living in terrace so everything's there we also have a staging area there which will make it very convenient for the drilling because all the the gear uh, can be uh, stored there and uh, move to the alpine part it's about a five minute round trip with the helicopter and 
accessing it from terrace, uh, accessing Nas Creek from terrace is about 15 minutes by helicopter. So it's very easy logistic. Uh, so we're, our plan is to drill between 2,000 and 5,000 meters uh, for this, uh, this summer. Most of them will be drilled uh, on the um, on the uh, Copper Ridge uh, zone. Uh, why the gap between 2,000 and 5 meters is all uh, related to the financing that we're doing right now. So, so far, uh, financing has been good. So we uh, will probably, we're probably more shooting now for a bit, uh, a bit more than 3,000 meters of drilling. And we'll with eventually... The, yeah, go ahead. With the drilling program, you've got the initial uh, drill pads planned. Um, and obviously, as you drill and you get you, you examine the, the core sample and then you do more prospecting, your, your plans will evolve. But currently, how much uh, of, let's say, that 3000 meters has already been planned out and how much is sort of evolving depending on results from sampling and uh, core that you get back uh, has still to be determined? Well, Martin, if you look at the at this map, you can see that there's a this is a huge area. So it, just yeah. like this, it's 1.5 kilometers. So there's a lot of cluster of uh, good samples, high grade samples. And in uh, most properties, you have uh, one or two samples like this, or even you can have a cluster and it's a drill target. So right now, just with what there, I could easily drill 5,000 meters, no problem, just by having to test those targets. So what we're going to do, we need to do some cherry picking a little bit here. So we're going to aim for the best concentration, highest concentration of uh, veins that we have So and, and value. So here in this stretch about 200 meters, well, we, there's probably like 30 veins in there. So what we're going to do is going to put some holes there and we will, uh, the, the, the goal is, yes, uh, we're going to look at the core and have three holes so far planned on those uh, on those pads but it's easy to add others if we see that okay we're hitting really good uh, veins there well we just change orientation and angle to drill to uh, to add more holes there and it's the same in this area here that we were looking at a little bit uh, earlier that so that that hole that 350 meters old is right there so with if with success, well, we can easily add some um, some holes, but uh, we can also add some pads too, because if we drill there, we have success, well, we need to figure out what's going on there. So we can start, well, with the drilling that we will do, we will start building understanding and a deposit. This is our goal. But uh, yeah, with further success, we will just try to uh, uh, plan more holes that will allow us to just work more on the model that uh, of the deposit yeah so, right. so yeah it's so i'm just going to interest you so it, it so the plan is to drill i mean this is this is our first drilling season up here this is you know and we're and, and like Ann said what we're going to be drilling for i mean with successful drilling we will get result better results in in in, in on, on in in the market also uh we know how to drill we did over three hundred thousand meters of drilling in 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 now gold uh, which was yana myself and so, I mean, our goal, our goal is to, is to, you know, it, uh, is to go up here and spend and, and put in 10 to 20,000 meters. I mean, it, 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 lots of things, lots of things will change with success to drilling, like a road coming, you know, be planning a road to come up, longer drilling season. And of course, just more drills, more drills to drill it out. One thing we don't like, we don't like sitting around. We never did. So if it's drillable and we can get the drills and we have the money, we will drill. We, we're known to drill, and that's what we like to do. So this is the exploration, drilling, not exploration drill. We know what we're going to drill on success into the market, raise a lot more money, raise a lot more money, do a lot more, a lot more drilling. And there's a lot of other places that we need to drill also. But this, 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 this is this is the this is our baby for this year. Copper Ridge is the place to be. Everything yeah, so. Want, yeah, just want to want, on the one slide, just back up to to uh, the Holy Grail. So as Dan was saying, most of the stuff that you see, you can see there's a lots of results that we have, lots, lots of showings, lots of results. Everything has been where we can get to it by truck, quad, walking side by side. We have not tested the Alpine here. And the Alpine still needs to be tested. 
We've got all these creeks that run out of here, and there's some very rich creeks, rich creeks out there, out here. They all they all carry gold, so they're always they're, every every one of them carries some kind of gold, and some of them are very very famous creeks for carrying uh, you know big nuggets and stuff like that. So we also know that we have a lot of work to do in the Alpine on the Holy Grail. Again, the same that we don't want anybody to get you know nervous about us losing our focus. Our focus. Our focus is not is not Creek and Copper Ridge. That's that's where we need to be, and that's where we're going to be. So, just to synthesize that, drilling is on Copper Ridge, and then the rest of the property, the areas in the rest of the property, are more prospecting, getting a, a lay of the 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 land. But the the drilling focus uh, is clearly on Copper Ridge. It, it's on Copper Ridge, but Yan already has other other the other locations that we have drill target ready. One being Leon's Leon's Legacy, the other one being the Doreen Mine. No, we he's already got drill targets there. But okay. Again, so we so we, so yeah. So we're so we're there already. We know where to go and drill there also. But again, this is where our gravy is right now. And being so large, so large, we need to we need to address this. And we have we have two prospecting teams on 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 the ground. Also, that they're working, you know, the we have we have a drilling campaign going on at 24 hours a day, and we'll have our, and and we we'll also have our prospecting teams up there, and they'll be expanding expanding in this area. We need to work this area even harder. And this year, it's just there's there seems to be a lot of extra, I guess, a lot of programs that didn't get started this year. So we were able to get a full house of geologists for us this year. So we have we have four geologists on site. And, and 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 our and our exploration crew, our our, our prospectors are really really well trained, well trained, and know what they're doing, and they know this area. The most uh, got a lot of the guys that are from the terrace area, so they know this area. So it's not like we're coming in here blind. We're not blind anymore. We just need to keep on following our plan and stepping out, stepping out, stepping out. And also, our team is is back uh, every year. So for the it's a uh, our fourth, uh, third, third summer together. That's okay. because we have the best chef, and we have the best chef in the city. <laughs> we, did, <laughs> we, we, brought a, we brought a chef, and everybody's happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A full belly makes for uh, good workers. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're we're done the the overview presentation, and we can kick into some questions here. All right. Uh, simply enough, when will drilling start? Uh, should uh, start uh, in two three weeks. All right, uh, we're we're almost there. Yeah, we're we're getting ready. Uh, hopefully, pads will be built uh, next week, and then we will follow with the drill. Questions and comments from the audience here. Love your grab sample results seen on social media. What trends, silver, gold, copper, have you seen to date, and how long? Do you see this as a much bigger extension to the golden triangle system or a new system does it have the same geology what what, what we're seeing right now uh, the, the the rock package is the same one so uh, i'm not the, that familiar with everything that is happening in the golden triangle but uh, i know that those uh, deposits are in the similar rocks that what we have uh, continuity uh, maybe there's uh, some uh, um, um, I would say uh, some defaults that are might be a link at some point, but uh, I would say it's too early to see to uh, a real comparison uh, with what's happening, uh, what, what they have there, because uh, most of the time they have porphyries there. Uh, right now, what we're seeing here is uh, lots of uh, quartz veining uh, hosted in an in intrusion, so we need to do further geology to understand really what's going on on our stuff, which is one of the goals for uh, this summer, and also with the drilling that will help a lot. But uh, yeah, well, that's something we need to push further to, to increase our knowledge on. And, and it, like you're saying, that's where drilling is, is key to really look underground uh, to see yes. what, what's going on there. And I have more fresh rocks also to be able to check alteration and everything because the, the rock is highly weathered where we are, uh, on, especially on Copper Ridge. So we need to uh, be able to see more fresh rocks and see what kind of zonation and everything we have. 
I'm, I'm guessing with uh, you, the, there's good labor out there, uh, geologists and so forth, uh, there shouldn't be too much of a backlog at the labs, the assay labs, so you can hopefully get quick turnaround on uh, your, your drilling. Well, it's a uh, well season, and the alpine uh, the the alpine is clearing from the snow, so everybody will probably launch their drill roughly at the same time. So we'll see how okay. it affects the lab. But right now, turnaround is not too bad. We're down, we're below a three weeks turnaround for the for the sample, so uh, it's okay. pretty good. All right, okay. Yeah, we're dropping our samples um right down in Terrace, so it's like a fifty minute drive, and we drop them off. So it's everything. Like I say, logistically, we are. We couldn't be in a better spot. No kidding. Well, as geologically, the Golden Triangle is obviously uh, excellent, but it is remote. It, it, it's very, so many of the yeah. places are so difficult to get to, and you've got the, the infrastructure uh, locate uh, proximity to civilization there, which is fantastic. I would I would say that we were probably, of all the companies, we're probably, the, probably more logistically, probably the best one out there. I, I'm yeah. not saying the best company, I'm just saying, for yeah. as far as where we are, it's, it's we can touch, we can see everything from as you can see. You're sitting on Copper Ridge. You can see the highway that has, that's an underground uh, highway between Prince George and Prince Rupert. That's the Skeena River that you see in between. In between the Skeena River and us, you will have a, a the big a big power line coming through and the railway. And the railway stops at at um, at the uh, Doreen, the, the, Doreen the, 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 the little town of Doreen. It's it's a it's a stop. So if you if you flag this train down, it's got to stop and take you up. So it's a station. So fantastic. So, we, so logistically, yeah, we're really close. Like we're like here, we're thirty five kilometers um, from Terrace, and then most of that's highway, and then a little bit on the gravel. Uh, from the other side, we're five minutes, and we're we're in, we're in the we're up in the bush. It's it's very like like Jan said. We look out our window, we're looking at our mountain. So the thing, and another thing, like for for cost, I mean, where, where we have all where we have our camp. And our campus is is all all in one camp. And so we live there, we eat there, we do our work, we cut our core, we the helicopters land, we have our staging area, we have our wood there. It costs us five thousand dollars a month. You're not going to find that anywhere. It's just a beautiful location, and it's and it's away from everybody, so that we we're secluded. There's no interruption from people, and we don't and we don't interfere with anybody. So it's it's, it's I couldn't we couldn't ask for anything better than what we've got. What are ballpark your and there's lots of way to measure, but your per meter drilling costs? What do you uh, figure that to be about? It's probably around five hundred dollars a meter. Okay, all right. What methods are you using to optimize time in prospecting such a large work area? Well, uh, right now, well, the first thing was is to. Uh, we're using all the logging rows that are being developed, so it gives us easy access. As you can see, uh, on this uh, on the Holy Grail, we managed to go. We're going a lot to a lot of places there, so logging rows are really helpful there. And then we just well, we also use the lidar to see where we can potentially have uh, outcrops uh, that we, we will find outcrops. And then we well, and still we haven't touched the uh, the alpine area. So when one of our goal is when we're drilling, when we have a helicopter, we will just being drop crews also here and there to uh, prospect. But yeah, we're preparing prospective area based on historical data, which is not there's not a lot of historical data there. There's a, there's just a few things, but the we're the first ones to consolidate all of this and package together. But yeah, the, so we're using the, 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 the logging roads, the, the LIDAR to pinpoint where potential outcrops and we just go there. So, uh, and we have a good team of experienced people that uh, walk uh, very well in the bush and steep, steep tearing. All right. Um, Question here from the audience, Michael, a couple months, this is, I'm reading it, so I, I don't know where the source is, but a couple months ago, you said, quote, in one year, Prospect Ridge will be a very different company than it is now. Was this in reference to new findings or what is based on anticipated results from the summer's drill program? Drill program. Drill program okay. is going to, will change us. It, 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 it's, it, it's a company changer, the drill program. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Also, so there, 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 this this property, I've been around quite a while. I've been with really good companies. I've never seen a property like this. I came out of retirement because of this property. I've never I've never seen a comp a, a property move so quickly forward because everything seems to be at surface. You just can't walk along at 1.6 kilometers and find 20 veins sticking out of the ground, malachite, everything, and then it seems to host everything. And, it, and it's not in one area. I mean, the, I mean, the real big turn on here is in six, seven spots here. You can go and get the same kind of grade. So something big is happening there. And But yeah, my statement, I remember making that statement. I made it a few times. It's a company changer. The drilling the drilling is 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 key to this company changing. On success, sure. our success from drilling will change this company. Yeah, yep. this is a huge surface discovery. And if we manage to, with the drilling, to turn this into a deposit, that will be huge. That will change. Yeah. All right. And then a second part to this question. Also, has investor sentiment from Canadian government shifted towards junior mining in the BC area? I don't even know how to answer that, to be honest. <laughs> so Yeah. Um, well, uh, why don't you just talk about generally uh, how are government relations, uh, the BC government in terms of being supportive of uh, drilling and exploration and, and so forth? Well, I, I don't think they're so, they're not so supportive. It takes a long time to get anything done. And they're not, and I don't want to be saying anything because they might be online here. So, I mean, it would be nice if they would work closer with us because they, I think they forget, the, the, like the ministry forgets that we have, you know, we have ins investors money and that money is meant to be going to certain places. And sometimes you can wait for a permit for a year and a half or two years. And if it holds you up for two years, it could ruin, it could ruin a great project. And so, I yeah. mean, it would be nice if they would work a little bit faster with us to get things done. Like when they want something from an area, what, what we found, what we found is what, so as soon as we needed something or they can, we would be on it right away. So we didn't, there was no hesitations on our side. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. And, and, and so, but the thing was they would hand us one thing and then we would get to the end of that and that would be another, which we could have done all together at the same time. So something that took us three months or, or, or nine months to do, we could have done it in three months. And so it was a time there's a big time lapse and they don't seem to have the same concern that we have of, you know, holding our funds to use them where they need to be used on the properties instead of waiting and waiting and waiting to get these permits to get going. I mean, we were, we were, as soon as we came into the area, we made relationships and we made some really good relationships that really helped us. We also aligned ourselves with a lady that worked in the ministry that really helped us with the ministry, but she also knew all the First Nations and she introduced them all to us. Uh, together, so we we have we've made sure that we have stayed on top of all of that also, and she helps guide us through that. If we if we miss us if we miss something, she's helping us right away. So anybody working up in this area needs to have someone like that on their team, walking in their cold and trying to build something is going to take you three times longer unless you have some kind of connection. We were lucky enough that the pros the prospectors that were that we got from were very well known in town. And uh, and they and they helped us immensely. I mean, they saved us tens of thousands of dollars. I don't think that answered your question, but it it was close. Okay, and, and it's a good and, and it's good information. So yeah. it, it's all good there. Uh, it's a little. Uh, this next question is probably a little uh, ahead of things, but uh, what is the ultimate end game here? Selling the company to someone who will mine it or, or develop it yourself? Uh, for myself personally, I will not be. I'm 72 years old. I am not going to be staying, spending 24 years here like I did the Nagold and Fortuna. So uh, it's going forward, if we decide we have we have the right people around with Simon and Simon and Michael, if, if, if that's what we want to do, but I don't think so. I think what we need to do is do as much exploration and much drilling as we can, understand the property fully before someone comes knocking. Because I do yeah, believe yeah. that there's a lot more than just Copper Ridge. I don't think there's just Copper Ridge. There's there's a much more happening here that needs to be investigated. And what I don't want to see happen is us selling something, so help selling something premature and leaving, you know, tens of millions of dollars on the table that should be going to the shareholders. And so we need to understand this property as much as we can before we get to that stage. So that might take three or four or five years. 
And for sure, the first thing we need to do is we need to get on the ground with our prospectors and just keep on working it, keep on working it. And then drilling again and coming in right in behind drilling so that we get, so we have an understanding. Because we, we understand that we own it. Otherwise, they, they we don't own it. And then leaving something behind is not what I want to do. And I've said that three times already. But I don't want to leave something behind. Uh, I think our goal is to create maximum value and to evaluate what we have on our land. Because if you look at, at this slide there, just there, coverage there, we found last year in two days of prospecting, we found some new stuff. So, and we know we can see that those veins are, are a little bit similar. So there's an understanding that we need to reach. And I'm also answering that uh, previous que question about the geology. So. We need to be able to make a link on all this and maybe we'll understand way better after that what's going on and where are other targets too. So and before wanting to sell or regard whatever is going to happen in the future, well, we want to at least uh, increase the knowledge so we can increase also the value of uh, the shareholders of, and of this land package. Yeah, well said. Yeah, yeah. I, it's yeah and you haven't drilled all hole yet so it's it's very early to be talking about that until you at least get some uh you got to put in uh numerous holes in the ground to really get an understanding of what's going on yeah yes i i i believe so but i i, I do believe that if we drill a hole and it comes back and it's got you know extremely extremely high value and 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 length and grade to it i i'm pretty sure you'll start getting attention right away one thing you notice yep. in, in the in the golden triangle you don't see any juniors having minds as big companies move in there right away and take them out. So yeah. these guys, they 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 know what they they're they're out there and they're out there looking. And that's another you know, point that I made at the very beginning on the second slide, with us, us controlling X amount of shares that we can't, you know, someone can't come and come against us, uh, you know, hostile takeover. And 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 that's one of the things we set up from the very beginning. And I have heard some very strong shareholders that have been with me for a long time. Okay, yeah. we should wrap things up here. We're uh, into this about an hour. So um, can you, ch I, I, what are the, just reiterate the key catalysts coming up over the next couple of weeks and then any sort of concluding thoughts, quick summary of why people should be interested and uh, in, in, in Prospect Ridge? Well, there's a, there's a few things that, you know, for number one, number one is the financing will be completed here in the next the next 10 days. And um, pretty, we have more than enough to do all of our programs. Uh, I would still like to take the other, that, the last 400,000 in, but if we don't, we don't, and it's not going to, it won't change what we're going to do. And then, of course, for me is getting that drill, uh, the, the, the drill into the ground and, and drilling. Uh, that and 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 our prospectors getting on top and 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 move and moving forward, moving forward with exploration. So those are those are big catalysts for me. End 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 of the financing. They get the drilling started, and 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 our exploration crews up where we want them, up where we want them, up on up in the up up and up in the Alpine up there. Excellent. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. That, that really is uh, exciting. It looks like uh, all sorts of opportunities there. Great to have you here pitching us the story. I'd love to have you back for a little shorter segments as uh, you get information in from the property and uh, keep the information flowing. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And thank everybody for showing up. Yes, all thank right. you for your time. Thank you all. Okay, bye.